All right. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I wanted to come on this afternoon because I won't be on in the morning. Tomorrow morning is a, a holiday. And um, so, and I'm going to be off. I don't have to go to work tomorrow. So, I'm going to sleep in a little late. <laughs> but I wanted to come on tonight and share something with you. But before I get to my subject title on tonight, I just wanted to make a few announcements. I'm not going to be on tomorrow morning, but uh, I'll be back on Tuesday morning. Since tomorrow morning is a, tomorrow is a holiday, which is Labor Day, we won't be conducting the can, conversations with the candidate, with candidate William H. King III, who's running for Galveston County Judge. He comes on every Monday to be interviewed with myself and um, myself and my technical director, Jacqueline Sauber. So that won't take place tomorrow night at 7.30, but he will be back on on the following Monday, okay? So that's that announcement. Now, I have Simply Free Little that's going to be coming on this Tuesday, which is the 6th of September. She will be on at 7 o'clock. Uh, from the Simply Free Little Talk Show. And uh, it's going to be an amazing interview. I'm looking forward and I'm very honored that she uh, agreed to come on to the Electra James Inspirational Talks. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just always uh, grateful and appreciative to what the things that God does in my life. Um, and with that said, I just want to share something with you that was laid on my heart. So my subject title, Humpty Dumpty, came to mind today. And I know nobody did that for God through his Holy Spirit. Humpty Dumpty, he sat on a wall. But Humpty Dumpty, he had a great fall. And all the king's horsemen, and all the king's men, they couldn't put Humpty together again. And when, how is that relative to what I'm talking about? Is the fact that you can search all you want to. In life, in life, there are some things that mankind cannot do. Only God can put you back together again. When you feel like the pieces are unraveling in your life, God is the fixer. Because when he does something, when he puts you back together, he does not hold that over your head. And this is what I hear him saying to me is the fact that if we, those of us who are called by his name would humble ourselves in prayer. We will stop looking for Humpty Dumpty to show us our way. God is who he is. Listen to me closely. God is who he is. And when you relate that to Humpty Dumpty who sat on the wall, but he had a great fall. And all the king's horsemen and all the king's men, they couldn't put him back together again. That's what God is saying. We sitting in places and in spaces that we're not comfortable with. We're, 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 we're putting ourselves and have ourselves in situations that we know that are not beneficial and good for us. We, we, we find ourselves trying to connect with people who don't even care about or, or desire to like or love us. And God said, you sitting up on this wall and you having these great falls and can't nobody put you back together but me. I'm the only one that can fix your life. I'm the only one that can help you pull things back together. Yes, I do work 
through humankind. But guess what? If I work through them, I got to be the one doing it so that they, those who you find yourself connecting with, don't aren't able to hold that over your head because they're not there for the wrong reasons. They are there because God put them there. He placed them in your life. He placed them over your life. He placed them and situated them to where they could be an asset and not a subtraction to your life. Because anything that's not adding to your life is subtracting from your life. And if you choose to stay there, you just like Humpty Dumpty, you just sitting on the wall and you are going to have a great fall and all the king's horsemen and all the king's men, they will never be able to put you back together again. Why are we as people who claim to know and love God depending on everybody but him to fix us? He knows who, who he wants to put there to help you through things. But you want to call the shots. And God said, so if you're going to call the shots, I'm just going to take my hands off of it. Because those people that you think can do what they can do, they got situations in their life as well. See, sometimes people aren't just not just absent just because they want to be absent. Sometimes people got so many things going on in their life, no matter how bad they want to be there for you, they just can't. But God got some people who can. Because what I've come to realize in my life, I'm not putting this on somebody else. I'm talking about in my own life. I was Humpty Dumpty. I was sitting on that wall and I had a great fall. But you know what I messed up at? I was looking for man to fix it, not God. But when I came to myself, when I, Electra, came to myself and realized that can't nobody help me, Lord God, if you don't bring me through, I'm done. See, that's what all of us have to realize. It's some things God got to get you through or you are done. See, that's why you can't think so highly of yourself and so lowly of everybody else because you don't know what people going through and people don't know what you going through. See, here... We stand at the crossroads sometimes in life. And you know how we get there? Because when we fall, when we make an error, when, we, when, when, when things that we desire to take place in our lives don't take place like we think they ought to, we start running everywhere. We start engaging ourselves in in and everything. And God ain't got nothing to do with it. Nothing. Go over there to Psalms 1 and 1. Psalms say, counsel not with the ungodly, nor sit it in the seat of the scornful. But you know what? When we like Humpty Dumpty, see, I'm guilty myself, so I'm not blaming nobody. I can only tell you what you can't talk about, what you haven't been through. See, I was over there when situations was in my life. I wasn't paying no attention and knew the word. And knew the word. And I wasn't paying no attention to what that word was saying. Because I was like, Humpster, Electra, 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 this is God now, Electra, my child, listen to me. I told you to counsel not with the ungodly. I told you to sit it not in the seat of the scornful. I told you that. Why are you doing what I told you not to do? You'll never come up out of your situation until you hear my voice and you are obedient to my voice. See, but that's something I had to come to terms with. And I know that I'm not the only one that's guilty of that. So many of us are. You can quote scriptures all day. You can read scriptures all day. You can do whatever you do all day. Unless you got a relationship with God and that you are being obedient to God, he can't direct you. Because you are letting, you talking out of one side, but you doing an opposite on the other side. See, amazing grace, amazing grace, 
When you got to live that thing, when you go through some things, you going to understand and you going to sing Amazing Grace a little different than when you sung it and you wasn't going through nothing. When you wasn't facing no trials, when you wasn't facing no tri tribulations, when you wasn't facing circumstances when you had more month than you had money, when you wasn't facing the loss of family members, when you wasn't facing medical conditions that they told you that they just don't know how they going to fix this thing, how they going to straighten this thing out. When you had to depend on God because you couldn't listen to the doctors because the doctors had you gone six months ago and you done been here 20 years later. You was hunting dumping sitting on that wall at that time. But you had a fall at that time. And God say all of them doctors and all of them assistant physician assistants and all of them nurses, they couldn't put you back together again. But God stepped in. And God say, I got you. See, that's the thing I like about him. When he say, I got you, he got you. See, people will say it, but when it comes times to action, they gone. They gone. You wonder what happened. I was told as a young girl a long time ago by my parents, it's bad to have fair weather friends. That's not a good thing. Because they only there while things are in a season of blessings. But they gone when the troubles rise. See, you have to take it from me. Just evaluate yourself in your own life. How many people were still standing there with you when things got rough? Can you count them? Can you count them? How many people really stood with you when the trials came and the tribulations came? And when you were sitting on that wall and then you had that great fall, who ran there to put you together again? But see, God say, I never left you. I never forsaken you. I never did that. And I won't. See, because I don't turn away from you. You turn away from me. Because you looking for the king's horsemen and all the king's men to put you back together again. And it just don't work like that. It just does not work like that. You got to let God order your steps. I love that song. I used to sing that song all the time. Order my steps, dear Lord. Lead me and guide me every day. Send your anointing, I pray. Order my steps in the Lord. And see, you can't be so high up that you can't understand what he's doing. What he's telling you is to humble yourself so he can take charge. Through that song, every song that's sung, everybody sing it a different way. Because it means one thing to me and it can mean something else to you because it depends on what's going on with you in your life. I used to hear, sing a song all the time that my late husband used to love for me to sing. They said I wouldn't make it. They said I wouldn't be here today. They said I'd never amount to anything. They said that. But now I can say that I'm on my way and I'm growing more and more each day. See, you got a song in your heart too. God gave you a song too in your heart. God gave you some words on your lips, on your lips that you can share with people. Instead of keeping your testimony to yourself, share it with somebody. Tell them where you've been. Somebody need to hear your testimony. And I'm talking about one that's not selfish, one that's not self-centered, one that's going to tell the truth about it and let it go to build you up. I got testimonies just like everybody else. And you got testimonies just like I have. But see, when God send you through something and you pass that test, you supposed to be using that to build others up, not to tear them down. And what we are doing, come on now, what we are doing, we are taking what we have, what we've been through, what he brought us out of to tear somebody else down. Instead of saying, I know what you're talking about. I've been there. 
I've been there. I've been there. When I talk to these young people and, I t and, and they ask me questions, Miss James, how do you face your fear? How do you face it? And you know what I share with them? First of all, I have to realize that this is something I'm uncomfortable with. So I got to sit down and try to figure it out. And that takes some time by yourself and, 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 and identify with that fear that you are experiencing. Because fear is false evidence appearing real. Listen to me closely. I'm not saying that you should just look over it and skim over it and act like it's nothing. Fear is a real thing. But I had to reverse it and say, is it really as bad as I think it is? And can it get worse than it is right now? The answer is yes. You know why? Because you have to identify with the fact that it's false evidence appearing real. In other words, this is something that I'm going to have to sit down and it's really happening. But it's not going to take me out because I'm not going to let it take me out because I'm going to depend on God to bring me through it. And how do I do that? I'm going to listen for his voice. See, I tell you, I, I share this all the time. Get all that chatter out of your ears. I tell young college students this all the time. You cannot be successful and have everybody in your ears. You cannot do it. I sought degrees and I accomplished them. And I was just as scared, and I tell college students this, I was just as scared when I got my, was working on my associate, when I moved into my undergraduate, and then I got into graduate, and I always had. So you gotta be, you gotta be honest and stop walking around like life was a cakewalk for you and talk to these young people and tell them, I had some of the same emotions going on that you're going through right today, but I want you to know you can make it. You just got to keep all that chatter out of your ears. You got to put God first. You got to talk to God by yourself. Mom and daddy and them can't do that. Grandma, grandpa, they can't do that for you. You got to go to God for yourself. And you got to cry out to God. And you got to tell God just how you feel. It. You know why I can say that? Because I went through it. I went through it. I've shared this before, my testimony when I was in graduate school and I, and I, and I, and I, and I was taking statistics. Hear me clear now. I was taking statistics and I, look here, I bought the book, Statistics Without Tears. It looked like I cried more. It's a book. You can pull it up. Statistics Without Tears. Okay. But look here, y'all. That, that course had me. Because in college, it's always going to be some courses that gonna, it's going to get next to you. So I'm there. And, I, and I'm sitting down in the hall after I'm on the bench. And I'm, and, I'm, I, I'm, and I'm sitting there and I'm pondering over this grade that I made. And I'm like, man, I, I ain't never made a grade like this before. I, 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 I never made a grade like this before. You know, tears run down my face. That's what we do. That's what college students do, right? So... A gentleman in my class walks up and he says, hey, he said, how did you do on the test? I said, not good at all. I said, I'm waiting to talk to Professor Mark. And he's, I said, because, <laughs> I said, man, like, I ain't never made a 35. He said, well, you done better than me. I made a 10. What I'm saying Here's what I'm saying. Is somebody always going through something and they results are not turning out like yours and you a little further along than you think. Did I end up passing the course? Yes. But I, but I went to the professor and I said to the professor, I said, look, this, this, this class here he got me. I can't sleep at night. I'm doing everything that telling me to do. I mean, like I, I, I'm, I'm writing my research paper. I'm like, I'm a hundred. I'm, I'm, I'm on a hundred right now. And I, and I, and I need to know what I can do. What, what, what I could, I don't, I, to graduate on time and get my master's, I had to pass that class. And let me tell you something. 
Something that my professor told me, I never forget her, Dr. Ma. She said, Miss James, you don't never know how, how strong you are until strong is your only choice. She told me that sitting in her office, you never know how strong you are until strong is your only choice. And at that time, strong was my only choice. What I'm saying to y'all today, just because, just because people looking like and walking around like they got it all together, and you might feel like they got airs about themselves, people are dealing with things in life, even our young people, even our young people. And that's why even over there in Isaiah, I love that, that 40th chapter. They that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew, he shall renew thine strength. Because he know you're going to fall sometimes. He know you're going to be just like Humpty Dumpty. He know you're going to fall sometimes. But he also reminds us that all the king's heart. And all the king's men, they're not, they not going to be able to put you back together again. You got to trust me. You got to trust my word. And know that they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew thine strength. It shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And then he turns around and tells us, and the young men, they shall utterly fall. But guess what? When you fall, there's nothing wrong with falling. The only thing is you got to get back up. Because all of us going to fall sometime. All of us going to fall sometime. All of us going to be misunderstood sometimes. All of us going to be talked about sometimes. That's why I love that song that my late husband used to just sometimes ask me just to sing it for him. They said I wouldn't make it. They said I wouldn't be here today. They said I would never amount to anything. Oh, but I'm glad to say that I'm on my way and I'm growing more and more each day. Oh, I've been talked about and I've been criticized and I had to wipe many, many, many tears from my eyes, but I'm still holding on. I'm still holding on. I'm still holding on. To his hand. To his hand. Not to mankind. To his hand. That's what you got to do. You got to keep holding on to his hand. You got to understand. That you are like Humpty Dumpty. All of us. Humpty Dumpty. He sat on the wall. See I, what I want to do. I'm just going to right quick put my name in there. Electra. Sat on the wall. But Electra had a great fall. And all the king's horsemen and all the king's men, they just couldn't put Electra back together again. Put your name in there. And turn your face toward the heavens. And talk to God. And if you hurt, you tell God you hurt. It, 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 I mean, when I say hurt, I'm not just saying physical. I'm talking about the way people might broke your heart. I'm talking about the way people might be talking to you, talking down to you, treating you like you less than, treating you like you nobody. That's what I'm talking about. Pain comes in different forms. You might have some medical conditions. You just, you trying to grapple with it. You trying to, you trying to deal with what the doctor said. I'm telling you now, God said, give it to him. Because he is greater than any, any physician. Any physician. We got election season coming up. You think those candidates that's out there trying to win those positions, you think they don't have other things on their mind? You better think again. They got to they gotta depend on God to bring them through. I'm talking about the ones that want to do the right thing. Bye. God's people. I ain't talking about just no anybody. I'm talking about people who want to get in position to do the right thing for God's people. For the people throughout this nation. 
I don't care if it's county, state, l local. I, I, I mean, like, I, I don't care. Whatever it is. God is calling his people from the corners of the world and saying, y'all need to stand up. See, we didn't took a seat and we got real comfortable with it. You know, you can get comfortable sitting down. You can get comfortable just sitting down. But let me tell you something. You ain't going nowhere sitting down. All you doing is saying God don't know what he doing. It's nothing wrong with failure. What's wrong is when you don't get back up after you fall. Because God can take your pain and turn it into a purpose if you let it. If you let it. Let him. Stop letting people define you. Define who you are. Marginalizing you. Undervaluing you. Underestimating you. Stop it, like right now. Because they may can say it. Electra. 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 She sat on the wall. But Electra had a great fall. And all those people. All those people. All those leaders. They couldn't put her back together again. But God did. God put me back together. God made me stop putting myself down because of my complexion. God, God fixed that. When I thought I wasn't good enough, God say, I created you. What do you mean that you're not good enough? I made you. I created you. In my likeness and in my image. Who you allowed to come around and rob you? Rob your mind and tell you, you got to look a certain way. Oh, society. You start looking at society and listening to society and you forgot that I made you, that I created you. And the only reason why you exist is because of me. So, I'm saying to you today, whoever you are, you put your name right there where Humpty Dumpty name is. And you ask God to put you back together again. To fix you. To raise you up. Whatever you facing, ask him to raise you up. I don't care. I'm talking from A0 to 100. Whatever it is, you ask God to raise you back up. Because whenever he fixes it, it's fixed. Being mistreated, he can fix that. Feeling unloved, he can fix that. Finance is not right, he can fix that. Don't like the diagnosis, can't understand it, he can fix that. But he's the one that's got to put you back together again. And he's the one who is saying to myself, and to tell it to you, come to me. Come to me, come to me, come to me. I got you. And the only reason why you think that I don't is because you keep listening to the chatter of those who really don't care whether you sing or swim. They really don't care. God has sent people your way. God has positioned people in your life to help you through some things because he works through human agency. Listen for his voice and stop looking for the easy way out because I'm going to tell you like that professor told me and I'm going to get off of here tonight. You don't never know how strong you are until strong is your only choice. And just like it was that statistic in order for me to graduate, there's a lot of things that I've had to face after the statistics class. And there's a lot of things that you're going to face after you come out of one thing. 
but you can make it. All right? Y'all take care. I, again, I will not be on tomorrow morning, but I will return on Tuesday morning. There will not be a conversation uh, uh, with the candidate, Reverend William H. King the third candidate for Galveston County judge. Okay. 7.30 tomorrow night. It won't be live tomorrow night. Cause I want people to enjoy their families. Whenever you have some time out, you need to enjoy your family, your loved ones, even a day of just rest for yourself. Do that. You need that. Okay. And then there will be a live interview with Free Little from Simply Free Little Talk Show on the Electra James Inspirational Talks podcast. Please tune in tomorrow night, 7 o'clock p.m. It's going to be an amazing interview with her. Excited about it. Very excited about it. So you guys, take care of yourself. Please take care of yourself. Please take some time for you and for your family and for God. Okay? Humpty Dumpty, he sat on the wall. But Humpty Dumpty, he had a great fall. And all the king's horsemen and all the king's men, they could not put Humpty Dumpty together again. God has to do that for you and God has to do that for me. Y'all have a wonderful afternoon, okay? Bye-bye.